Hi guys, my name is Sarah, and today I'm going to be starting a series of tutorials on how to make some of the more popular lanyard stitches in Camp Stone. This video is on how to make box and barrel. Many people know how to make box already but have trouble starting it, so this video should hopefully clarify that. And once you know how to make box, learning how to make barrel is pretty simple. For both box and barrel, you're going to need two long strands of lanyard in any two colors. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you find, want to find all four ends of your two strings and match them up like this. Using that, you can pull along to the end and find the two end loops. That way you're able to find the exact middle point of both pieces. The reason you want to do this is because otherwise you're going to end up with one string that's much shorter than the other string. Okay, once you have the two midpoints figured out, you want to cross the two strings at the midpoints like so and then make sure you get all the extra string out of your way so you just have the two middle points lined up. So now I have two, the two strings crossed, one on top and one on the bottom. I want to take the one that's on the bottom, for me this is the orange one, and take one side and pull it over the, pull it over the blue string and take the other side and pull it over the blue string the other way. So now the orange string kind of makes a loop around the blue string and I keep my finger pressed on the cross just to hold it in place. Okay, so now we can kind of see that our orange string is loose on this side and a loop on this side. And over here, it's a loop on this side and loose on this side. So we want to take our first blue string and pull it over the loose side and under the loop. We want to take our other blue string and pull it over and under the orange string as well. What you want to do is go over the loop on the side of the blue string that's over the loose and under the loop. So I'm gonna do that right here over the loop, under over the loose side, under the loop, and pull it all the way tight. Now you should have a little box that's formed. And one thing you wanna make sure also is that sometimes people pull this string through the other blue loop. You see it's through the loop. If you do that, it also gets messed up. So if that happens, just make sure to pull the blue string out so you have a simple box and nothing more. Once you have that and it looks like this, the blue should look like a loop like it's looped around the orange, and the orange should look like it's looped around the blue. Once you have that, you can go ahead and pull all four strings tight. And you want to try to do this at the same time, where all four strings are being pulled equally. And you just keep doing that until you have a box. This is what my started box looks like. If it takes you more than one try, that's okay. When you're a beginner, sometimes it takes a few tries. If you turn it over, you'll see that it looks like this. This little orange hoop right here can be used to put a keychain through at the end. So now I want to start my first stitch. As you can see, I have an orange on the right side and an orange on the left side. I want to take the orange on the right side and loop it over, keeping it on the right side. And I want to take the left orange and loop it over, staying on the left side. You don't want to cross your strings or the stitch will not come out right. Now for the blues. As with the orange, you want to make sure you stay on the same side of the string that the blue appears on. So this string is closer to me, so I want to make sure it stays closer to me. And this, the other blue, is farther from me and I want to make sure it stays farther from me and the blues don't get crossed. So staying closer for me, I take the blue string and I want to go over the first one and under the second one over the first orange string and under the second orange string and I just pull that through and sometimes what will happen is it will look like this the stitch kind of looks sideways that just means it's twisted so you just want to untwist it with your fingers so it looks like that now I want to take the second blue and this blue started farther away from me so I want to make sure it stays on the farther away from me side um, of the other blue string and you just want to go over the first orange and under the second orange like this and just pull it all the way through until you end up with a box and it, my string got twisted again so just make sure you untwist it if it's twisted until they look like this and you should have like a little box like this that you can pull tight and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that tight now and there you go now you have your first stitch and you just want to repeat that process of making the stitch as many times as you want until your box is as long as you want it so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it again where the orange comes over and this and this orange comes over and stays on the, on the side that it's on and same thing with the blues so I'm just gonna go in with the blues and go over the first loop under the second loop 
and same thing with the other one. Over the first loop, under the second loop. And just pull it tight. As you can see, I've done a few more stitches and the box starts looking like this. Um, and you can make it as long or as short as you want depending on how much string you have and you can make it into a keychain or if you make it long enough, you can into a bracelet by bending it like so. Now in order to make barrel, you start with the same starting stitch as box. Once you've made that starter stitch, barrel is like box but diagonal. So whereas with box, you want to make sure you stay on the right, on the same side like this. Um, with, with your string path. With barrel, you want to cross over and go on the other side of the string, like this. And you want to take that, and now you take the orange string and put it on the other side, like this. And then the blues are the same thing. You just go over and under. And because you're not staying on the same path, a good way to remember the blues, the same trick that we always been using this whole time, make sure you're going over the loose side, under the loop side. So this blue is on this side, and we're gonna go over the loops, loose side, under the loop side, and pull it all the way through. And then I'm gonna go my, take my other blue, and make sure you're going under the loop, over the loose, under the loop. So here I take my second blue, and we're going over the loose side, under the loop side. And now you have a diagonal box. And that's how you make a stitch and barrel. Um, in order to make another stitch, you just do that same thing. So you wanna take the orange ring and put it over, but make sure you're not going on the right path. You wanna cross it over to the other side and cross the orange stitch over to the other side. So you have two diagonal stitches again and take the blue and make sure you're going over the loose under the loop so this blue goes on this side and now you do the other blue and the other blue is going to go over the loose side under the loop side And just like um, box, you wanna make sure that you don't have any twisted strings. And if you have twisted strings, just make sure you fix them before you pull it tight. And just pull this tight. So this is my finished product. As you can see, I chose to do a mix of box and barrel, but you can choose to do all box or all barrel or any mixture of the two. It's really flexible like that. To finish it off, I'm just going to use two fingers to loop around and pull the rest, the end through the hole, um, just to create a simple knot, which I'm going to pull tight at the very end of where I finish stitching, and I'm just going to pull that as tight as I can, and then you can snip off the ends wherever you want and add a keychain ring to the hook at the beginning, and then you'll have a keychain. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to drop a comment down below if you have a question or anything and submit a picture of your finished product to the Indoor World page.